We know surprisingly little about how dinosaurs lived, and even less about how they died, what we do know is often unsettling, in this video, we'll explore how plants may have caused the deaths of dinosaurs and pterosaurs. Some of these cases are hypothetical, others are backed by fossil evidence. And one, involving Lododactylus, is especially haunting. Plants fed countless herbivores. But not all plants were safe, take cycads, for example, ancient survivors still alive today. Their seeds contain a neurotoxin called sycosin. Some scientists believe that certain dinosaurs may have been poisoned by these seeds, especially if their feeding habits changed. The result? Liver damage. Nervous system failure. Weakness. Death, but poisoning is just the beginning. Imagine a dinosaur sprinting away from danger, focused only on the threat behind it. If a tree stood in its path, and it couldn't stop in time. A collision with a hard trunk could fracture its skull, jaw, or neck. Instant death. Smaller species were especially vulnerable, though such injuries rarely fossilize. In dense vegetation, young dinosaurs could become separated from their parents. Species like Myasaura showed clear signs of parental care. A lost hatchling might panic, starve, or fall prey to predators. For sauropod infants, losing the herd meant losing protection, and likely, their lives. Early thorny shrubs, like protoacacias, may have formed impenetrable thickets. Dinosaurs could injure their eyes, nostrils, or soft tissue trying to push through. Infection. Bleeding. Death, vines like philodendron or cissus could entangle a panicked dinosaur. If wrapped around the neck, they might cause strangulation or a broken spine. For pterosaurs, tangled wings meant a fatal crash. Even falling leaves from trees like ginkgo or araucaria could smother small dinosaurs. If enough debris covered their airways, they might suffocate. Large fruits, from cycads, magnolias, or early coconut-like plants, could crush eggs or injure hatchlings. A single impact might wipe out a generation. For species like Oviraptor, that could mean extinction, storms brought even greater danger. Falling branches could shatter skulls or ribs. Entire trees might collapse, trapping or fatally injuring dinosaurs. Some may have died slowly, unable to escape, without food or water. And then there's the risk of tripping. A dinosaur might stumble over a log or rock, fall, and impale itself. One misstep. One fatal wound. Tropical storms in the Mesozoic were intense. Flying debris, branches, fruit, even tree trunks, could kill on impact, pterosaurs flying low during hunting or landing were especially at risk. A sudden gust, illness, or disorientation could send them crashing into a branch. Some may have died instantly, impaled mid-flight. In 2003, paleontologists in Brazil discovered a fossilized pterosaur, Lododactylus sibiki. Its jaws contained a yucca leaf, wedged between the lower mandibles, paleontologist Eberhard Fry proposed that the animal collided with the leaf mid-flight. The leaf tore and lodged in its mouth. The edges were frayed, suggesting the pterosaur tried to remove it. But it couldn't eat. Soft tissue damage. Starvation. Infection. Death. This is the only known fossil where a plant may have directly contributed to an animal's demise. These deaths are possible, but hard to prove. Plants rarely fossilize alongside the animals they may have killed. And many of these scenarios leave no trace on bone, but that's what makes them so chilling. Because nature doesn't need to be a predator. To take a life. 